first, kindly introduce yourselves and tell us about you. Uh, yes, so my name is Anthony Regosa. I am the Chief Development Officer of Upward here located in Cambodia. Uh, we are registered currently in the U.S., uh, Seattle, Washington. About Upward specifically, it is the social platform which is going to create the ecosystem that connects all other platforms to learn, grow, teach, educate, and inspire. When and how did you start your business? Uh, we originally came up with the concept for Upward during COVID, I believe April. Um, it originally started as a sports analyst and data tracking app. We came up with the question, if uh, Giannis was never discovered, or had he not moved to Greece, would he still just be a very tall Nigerian? And uh, what we realized is there were some sports tracking apps that were available, but nothing that was produced for the masses. So with that being said, we all have cell phones, and we decided to use the power of the cell phone with the assistance of AI and AR to help guide us in tracking and learning. So, what made you want to start the Underground Academy? Uh, okay, so Underground Academy is what we call a passion project. A passion project means it aligns with something that I fall in love with, uh, but more so I, want, I was put in a position to where I was given the opportunity to use the platform of basketball as a vehicle to teach life skills. Of course you're going to learn how to play basketball, of course you're going to learn how to uh, shoot better, pass, run offense, that's great. But what about the other things that are not measured? Like how to compete, like how to lose gracefully, like how to win gracefully, uh, how to be accountable, uh, how to be a good team player, how to communicate with your teammates. Not just on the court, but in life, or in work, or at school, because these are the skills that translate into life. Uh, where do you wish to see Upward and the Underground Academy? Uh, so, the thing is, they are brother-sister. So, Upward is the umbrella company, and the Underground Academy is what we call a catalyst program. A lot of the parents and kids that are currently enrolled in the Academy will become users on Upwards, which will allow them to have access and create content as well on that platform. So, let's say, for example, they have a kid who had an outstanding game, and they were able to record the feature. Awesome. Great, let's get that uploaded because Little Mikey might be really a hidden potential, and let's see if there's a scout that's looking for a point guard at 6'3 in Cambodia or whatnot. It's an opportunity to uh, create exposure. Um, but that's what I can see. In addition to the Underground Academy, if you don't know, it's not just basketball. The Underground Academy will expand to multiple different fronts. The next one that we're venturing into is baseball, American baseball. And then we'll move into football. It's finding the right coaches to lead the program. I don't want to open up a program to open up a program. If we do it, we do it the right way. And I make sure I have the qualified coaches that have a love and respect for the game and want to teach it. What is the main goal of Upward and the uh, The main goal of Upward is to create users that want to create communities or become part of a community. Example given, it doesn't have to be sports related, but rather so, hey, I'm very good at doing card tricks. Let me go through and let me make content that is allocated towards card tricks and anybody else who wants to learn card tricks or wants to share their information, let's build that community. And one of the living, breathing testaments that we have is we have the Underground Academy, right? Because the Underground Academy lives and breathes basketball. It doesn't matter if you play for this school, this school, it doesn't matter if you're Filipino, Khmer, Chinese, we all speak basketball. And those communities are what I'm trying to build around that. So that's what Upward, and that's what I would like to see our more communities get involved with Upward, whether they are users or members or content creators. How does your business know for now? Oh, okay, very good question. Um, so, they are two separate business models, if you don't know. The Underground Academy is what we call a subscription-based business model, right? Where it renews monthly. Um, whereas Upward is a free application with the ability to upgrade to a premium or not. From starting, where we, we're in just concept or ideation, Upward is now into our, what we call our MVP, which is the minimum viable product. So now I have people, me, my development team, and some of my other coaches that were able to log on and run ourselves through some courses and kind of see how it goes. Our advantage is we try to gamify and keep users engaged. So example given, let's say you set your phone up for a basketball game, right? And you're shooting. And that game is how many shots can you make randomly from these spots? And it tracks it, right? And you're like, oh, I shot six for six from here and I shot four for four from there. But what if we track that and what if I push you against you? 
and he shot, he shot seven from eight. Now you start to create friendly competition that makes you better. So now it doesn't even become work, it becomes fun. And I'm like this play based learning. For the Underground Academy, that one has grown tremendously. We started originally with um, seven kids, and I was doing free camps at CCC, the Cambodian Country Club. So now where I have uh, over 127 registered users. And that's over the span of a little over 11 months. What does your business do for the people? Great question. We do two things, specifically the Underground Academy. What we do is we have what's called SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, which are not just ways that are gonna go through and, and kind of what we do to generate revenue. That's great, every business needs to be profitable, but what are you doing to change lives? So, for the um, SDGs, which we have for the Underground Academy, is we have what we call gender equality. So if you don't know, we also open up our program to women. And what I do is I go through and I do not segregate any of the women. The reason be is, as a woman or a young woman in Cambodia or in the world, you're gonna have to learn to compete with men, whether it's for your job, at school, so you might as well learn to fight early and often. In terms of upward, what it does is it allows people to have access to quality education at no charge. This is important because education is what allows people to grow and what changes generational poverty. What qualities do you do in every entrepreneurship process? Oh, okay, so I think every entrepreneurship should have leadership skills. In addition to leadership, I think they should also know how to follow, right? Communication skills, which not only, like, I, when I mean communication, I don't mean, hey, I know how to talk, but do I know how to actually talk to my team to where they understand me? That is very important, because you can talk days and days and days. I don't understand what this guy means, but how can I simplify that? where my team will understand and say, I know exactly what you're doing. So we want effective communication. That is huge. Uh, accountability, not just of your um, your peers or your uh, uh, co-workers, but of yourself. What is expected of me? Okay, I, I, I can't tell my staff to be here and say, you have to be the first one here and the last one to leave if I'm not willing to do the same thing. So I have to leave my demonstration, right? It's a huge thing. The other thing that's very important is, um, you have to be empathetic because not everybody has the same vision as you. Whereas I see the Underground Academy as never ending, other people might just see it as a job. And that's okay. So now our values are different line, but I know what you want, so I can deliver what you want. Versus me, I'll do the work for free because I like to. Where other people, hey, I need to make money. So uh, I think those are the biggest things. I also think uh, being an entrepreneur, you have to be a visionary. Which means you always have to see bigger picture. Because as soon as you get trapped in a little box, it's very tough for you to know how to grow. But others are expecting you to be the one that's leading the way. So you have to maintain, yes, you have to keep the day-to-day -day operations going, but you also have to be the one that's always focused on growth. And that means networking and going to events and putting yourself out there and sending emails and making phone calls, kind of doing all the dirty work that nobody wants to do. Um, and being okay with it and saying, I'm gonna take a hundred notes just so I can get one yes. So. What is your favorite part of being an entrepreneur? I'm gonna say this sounds very cliche, but the freedom, the freedom to be able to make my own decisions. And with that comes a lot of responsibility. I know that every decision I make, if it's a win, great, that's under me. But if it's a loss, that's also me. So there's a sense of responsibility because I have no one to blame. That was, that was my direction, I made that decision. Okay, I have to live with that. What advice would you give someone just starting their own business? Um, so, here, here's what I would say to anybody. I would say that if you are currently working and you have a job, stay with that job. Don't give that up. The time that you complete or the time that you're away from the job or your work is over, that is when you start building your business. Rather than going home and watching TV or going home and playing video games, no, start building your business. You just work six hours, seven hours for somebody else, go work six, seven hours for yourself, okay? Once the income uh, on a small business is able to sustain or overtake your current one, then it's safer for you to do that. I don't want to see a lot of people kind of just, oh, I cut it off and I go through all in. Now you have the, the pressure, right? But no, just do the work, guys. There's no shortcut, there's no um, magic class or anything like that. It is a lot of late nights and early mornings and long work sessions. So, thank you guys, guys. That's
After interviewing Mr. Anthony Regoza, I realized that making a decision is always better than avoiding one. When a decision has potentially harmful consequences, it's easy to get intimidated and possibly paralyzed by the choice. Experienced entrepreneurs eventually realize that in these cases, a decision, even a wrong one, is better than no decision at all, as action is always better than inaction. The fear of risk is overblown. Incorporating perceived risks into your decision making is vital as it helps you to understand the possibilities for each potential choices. However, risk in general is not something to fear and after making enough risky decisions, every entrepreneur learns this. Risk is just a complication for an opportunity and even if things go wrong, there's almost always a chance to make up for it. I realized even the most richest, most experienced ex entrepreneurs cannot be good at everything. All entrepreneurs require a team of people around them that complement their skills. The real skill is not only hiring the best possible team to support you, it's about hiring people who share your vision and passion by inspiring and investing in your team. Not only will they succeed, but the business itself will do too.